In the previous video, we have finished implementing the room first dungeon generator, which allows us to simply generate a room and then, or rather, a couple of rooms and then connect them with corridors to create a dungeon that is made out of multiple rooms. But if we visit our sprites, our dungeon characters and tile set, and we select the dungeon tile set and use the sprite editor to open this file, we can see that we have multiple different wall types or multiple different wall tiles, depending on which uh, direction uh, from the wall is the floor, we are placing a different wall type. Now, in addition to the basic corners and walls that, that are placed above the floor to the left, to the right and in the bottom, we have also those corners that goes uh, when our floor is surrounding a tile of type wall. So this will be a bit of work to figure out which of those tiles should we use. So let's explore how exactly we are going to find out which tiles of the type wall should we place around our floor. So let's take a look at the way that we are going to find out which of the wall tiles should we use. Right now we have a simple way to check against the floor hash set and we take a floor from a hash set and check its neighbors up, right, down and left according to our list of vector2 which is in the direction 2d class and we check simply if the tile is inside the hash set of our vector 2 int, which is our floor hash set. If the tile is in this hash set, it means it is a floor. If it, is, uh, if it isn't, then we say that this is a tile that contains a wall. So we can easily find the wall positions. But this method doesn't allow us to find all the walls since this wall in the end picture has also a this floor at the end picture has also wall in the diagonal direction from it so we are not finding those two walls for example so we will have to have a different list so list of again vector two ints that will be the diagonal directions and we are going to also need to check against those now, this is only part of the problem that we are facing. Another problem is that we are placing different tiles depending on the position of the wall in regard to the floor surrounding this wall. So, for example, this wall has floor to the downwards and in the diagonal downwards direction. And this wall has only wall in the diagonal direction. And the type of the wall tile is only dependent on the floor and how the floor tiles are surrounding this wall tile. So let's take, now take a look at the example. We have found this wall. Let's say we have also found the walls, the walls in the diagonal directions. And now what we can do is verify, uh, take the list of those walls, take one out and check what are the neighbors of this wall. So the basic check would be just to check the floor tiles in four directions just as we did for the floor tiles to find out the walls. So we would end up with the uh, results that above we do not have a floor, to the right we do not have the floor, downwards we do have the floor, and to the left we do not have the floor. Now we can straight away tell that this will need a, floor, a wall that is visible from the front, not the back. And this would be a good tile to place here. But how are we going to give this information to our algorithm so that it can generate the appropriate wall tile or choose the appropriate wall type? To save the positions of our neighbors, we are going to store them using a binary number. So binary numbers are numbers saved in a base 2 numeral system. So they look like this when there is 0 and 1. And those positions of the zeros and 1s are important because the uh, 1 at the most 
uh, right position is uh, multiplied by the 2 to the power of 0. The second, so the 1 to the left, is multiplied by 2 to, to the power of 1, and so on. And by calculating this, it this way, we can calculate an integer in the decimal system that is representing this binary number in this form. Now this is pretty important because if the order of the ones and zeros matters, we can assign a specific value and to this specific direction. Uh, so let's take the bit one to the right, and let's say this will be responsible for storing the value of the up position. If there is a tile of type floor, we are going to put here one. If there is no tile of type floor, we are going to put it here zero. The next bit will be the floor to the right direction. The next one will be the floor in the down direction. And the last one, the one most to the right, is representing the tile in the left direction. We can save the state of the neighbors of our wall tile as the binary value and pass it to our tile visualizer so it can read it and act appropriately to this value. So let's take a look at the example. Okay, so let's take a look at the example. We have our wall position and we want to save the state of its neighbors. So what we are going to do is we are going to find out what is in the up direction. If there is a floor, we are going to put one. If there is not, we are going to put zero. And since in C-sharp we can easily convert a string value into a binary value and then into a decimal system, we are going to create a string. Let's say it will be called neighbors. And let's set it to be null at the beginning. And when we discover the neighbor, we are going to add simply to the string, so neighbors. We can set plus equal to zero. And then we are going to move next to the right, because we are using the uh, direction to the static class that we have created, and the list of directions goes up, right, down, and left. So we are going to use this order. For the bit uh, for the neighbor's value so we're going to go we are going to go to the right and again we are checking if there is floor tile no we are putting zero and we will simply add zero to our neighbor's string downwards there indeed is a floor we are going to put one so we are going to put one into the neighbor's string and to the left there is no floor we are going to save it as a zero and we are going to put it into our neighbor's so this, basically, uh, the neighbor's string will be equal to this string representing a binary value. And what we can do is we can create a new file that contains the binary value. So uh, we are going to save it as the binary value in a string format. It will be 0b0010. And we are going to assign it to be wall, maybe top, if this is a type of our wall. Thus, let me quickly show you, we are going to end up with wall byte types class. It will be a static class that contains a list representing byte, uh, binary values that are corresponding to the specific wall tile type. And we are going to simply check against those lists, or in this case, it will be a hash set. And we are going to check if the value that we have found is on this list we are going to put there a wall of type wall top. And this is how we are going to find out what type of wall are we going to place in this position. Great. Now, before we go any further, there is also one thing that we haven't considered. At some point, we will have also neighbors in the diagonal directions. So again, it would be much simpler to take only four neighbors. But if this is a corner, then this tile will be different than wall top that we have previously set here. So we are going to also have to find out the diagonal directions if the wall has in the diagonal direction a floor tile. Now this poses a problem because even if we save this value, so this will be zero because here is no floor, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, and we are going to start with this, 
So we are going to save it into our st string as 0, 0, 1, 1. So those are those four bits. And next one, uh, we, are going, uh, we are going in the clockwise direction. And those will, this will be 1, 1, 0, 0. And this will be our value. Now the issue with this system is that there are a lot of different cases for which wall type we are going to use. So instead of using this complex system from the start, we are going to basically, first of all, find the neighbors in the cardinal directions and place the appropriate wall tile here. And later we are going to do a search for wall tiles that has a floor in the diagonal direction. And for those that have a wall, a floor in the diagonal direction, we are going to then find the more complex status of the neighbors and then process it again in our tile map visualizer. And this yields a problem that this is a very long binary value and there are a lot of possibilities for it. And this is why we are using this first approach, this minimum value, so the cardinal directions value, to place the walls because most of those walls, as you have seen previously, will be correct depending on only the cardinal direction. So up, right, left and down. And this will allow us to place an appropriate wall. But for the corners, this will be a bit more difficult and it will take a bigger number representing the state of the neighbors of our potential wall position. Now let me show you the class that we are going to create. And actually we are going to download it from the GitHub repository since this contains a lot of values and you can see that for the longer binary values, so the binary values that contain eight positions, the list of potential positions to create is much longer than for only four bit value, so the value that represents the cardinal directions. So you can see that for the wall side the left there is only one binary value, while for the, for the wall inner corner down left there are a lot of values. Now those lists might contain duplicates, that's why I'm using the hash sets. So we can see already that, for example, the wall full 8 directions, it contains a very long list of the binary values that are responsible for placing this type of wall tile at this specific position. Now I hope this explanation did make some sense to you, if it didn't, stick with me, we are going to create the code for our wall generator in the next video, we are going to download this file or rather copy it or download it from the github repository and place it in our folder and we are going to use it and then it should be more clear what we are doing here. And that's what we are going to start implementing in the next video. See you there!